Hi, I'm Michael Killen. Usually on this program, I ask all the questions. However, this time, J. Thor Walton, he is the editor of the Palo Alto Weekly newspaper and online publication, has asked if he would interview me on a series of things. And Jay, the camera is yours. Okay. Well, thank you, Michael. It's an honor to be here. And uh, it would be fun to talk to you about stuff. We've met uh, once and talked about your, your background. And, and, um, and it's uh, one that uh, I share interest in creativity. And um, mine's more with the written word than with the paintbrush. But maybe when I retire, I'll try some art. And when you're ready, come over to my studio. I'll help you get started. OK, we'll do that. So I think maybe I'd, I'd be interested in hearing about your early career uh, in business and consulting. And maybe you could talk a little bit about that. And, um, and then uh, what happened that uh, propelled you out of that career? All right. I'd say the most significant thing that ever happened to me in business was when I was a young man without a college background, I landed in a computer company called Wang Laboratories. It was small at that time. And the president was Dr. Ann Wang. He was a brilliant man. I, I'm not sure. I think he had two PhDs. And after a year, he used to come to me and say, he used to ask me questions about what he should do. And then he started to say, Michael, I have a question for you, but I want an answer that no one else would give. I want a special view. And I'd say from, you know, I wondered why he, he was asking me these kind of questions. And then eventually I emerged on my own and I developed a company for providing studies and consulting for companies all around the globe and I always work to give them a special view. So looking for the answer that nobody else would give. Yes, and, yeah. and I want to say it got to the point where I don't, I think people will say, I don't even look. It just happens. Okay. So I guess there's an intuitive nature in that kind of response. Or a bit of part of the brain is a little screwed up. That's okay. probably what it is. Another way of looking at it, but um, how do you get there? So you were in, in a successful business uh, consulting. How many years were you in that? I've been in what's known as the business intelligence. I like to say yeah. I'm from the world of intelligence, but it was business <laughs> okay. intelligence, publish, publishing studies about emerging business, information technology, financial services, and management thought for about 17 years. Okay. And. Uh, what got you out of the business? An accident. I had a full knee replacement, November 1996. And I left there, and I couldn't walk. And it took six or seven years of operations and therapy before I could function again mm. in any capacity. So meanwhile, I had to shut the company down. Actually, I was so weak. My wife had to do it, and, and that led to, I loved what I was doing, analyzing global business problems, and mm -hmm. I was very disappointed at the time. I once knew a city manager who was a very high-powered driving person, and he took a six-month um, leave of absence and went to a cabin in the mountains. And, I asked him what he thought about in that period of inactivity, which I'm going to ask you about. And he said the first few weeks, in fact, most, the most dominant emotion that he felt was sheer, it wasn't boredom, it was guilt. So what did you do for six or seven years to keep yourself sane? Well, <laughs> I, I want to say I felt I was finished. And maybe there was some guilt. You know, I, I was not very happy, and I just tried different things, and it was very hard to do anything. I tried a little acting. I started writing another book. I just couldn't stay focused on it. But it, it turned out it was a book about art. Mm -hmm. And 
I've always written books for the most part. I've never really known anything about. And, and then I started going to an art critique. I didn't go as an artist. I just went, I became interested in why artists paint mm -hmm. and how they think. Because I had never been around them it, to any extent. Mm -hmm. And they were a strange beast to me. <laughs> and, and so I just tried a lot of things and not much worked. The, um, had you written books when you were in the, in the business? Uh, in that way? Yes. You know, I graduated high school with a C minus in mathematics. I did have in a, in a technical school some more math, but I got a C minus again. And then when I was working at Wang Laboratories, I noticed in the lobby it was full of professors. And I asked okay. what, somebody, what are they there for? And they said the president wants to hire a college professor to write a book that combined math teaching and an introduction to computer programming. Mm -hmm. And then I was told he was frustrated with all of them. And, and these are people from Harvard, MIT, Boston mm -hmm. College, Boston U, Tufts. It went on. And so I put a little package together, a little proposal, in the three days after I learned, and I gave it to him, his secretary. An hour later he came and he said, Michael, do me great honor. You write the book. Uh -huh. So that forced me to, to really learn something about math. And I, I wrote the book. And then he asked me to write a more sophisticated book on mathematics and introduction to the use of computers for colleges. Mm. And I did that. That's how I got my first two books. Did you run into writer's block at all? I don't, uh, yes. I think at times I ran into writer's block. But somehow or another, something told me the way to get over or around or under writer's block is to get more knowledge. Okay. Go out, ask some people, pick up another book. It, to, for me, it's lack of knowledge that is the essence of writer's block. Not fear of being judged. No. No. I, uh, even with my paintings, it's been remarked by many people there is, it's fearless. Okay. I don't know right. why. Well, uh, you know, people rush in sometimes <laughs> where, where artists fear to tread. So um, the, um, after you're into this, uh, through your knee illness and surgeries and trauma, um, you then launched into the art world. Let's go into where your creativity blossomed in terms of the visual sense. Well, it happened almost instantly. Uh, an artist, uh, a man who's a critic, a critique, begged me to try to make some paintings. And I fought him off. And I felt sorry for him, because he asked me so many times. And finally, he put two canvases in front of me, some ink, paint, brushes. And I said, I don't want to paint. And he says, paint something, Michael. Oh, don't even paint something. Just script. OK. And he left the room for half an hour. And as I put stuff on the, on the canvases, and just like you have when you've been writing, so all of a sudden the paper talked back to you. All of a sudden these canvases started talking back. And I saw structure, I saw contrast, I saw all, and I started, and I got interested. And I went home, and I knew very little bit about math, and I looked up Matisse, and I immediately repainted Blue Nude. And it, it, I mean, it's a, everything is work, but it, God, it's not like working. For me, not like working on a chapter of a book. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, I quickly painted a big Picasso's Women of Abion. <laughs> Again, it was some work. I struggled. But I, f I had this feeling, if you just tried something, and if it didn't work, well, try it a little differently, and then a little differently. And I feel you can always make it work. Okay. Uh, and that was the beginning. Sort of, sort of a Picasso attitude, I would guess. Cause or uh, many, the amount of Bufano, uh, 